Hey YouTube, this is Jaden Storm, coming at you from Team Shadow Strike. Um, before I get into what this uh, video it is, which it's, it's an updated deck profile, um, I want to say, uh, if this is your first time checking out my channel, thank you very much for uh, uh, clicking on the video to watch it. Um, also, if this is your first time, um, um, please uh, go to my video, uh, my videos, and uh, look at my uh, the video titled September Monthly Giveaway. Um, it'll have a picture of Virgo as the as the thumb clip. Um, but anyway, um, I've been doing giveaways now every month. So, um, and what the giveaway for this month is, and for my subscribers, if you still have not done it, here's a reminder to go check it out. Um, it is a simple contest video where you literally answer a question by leaving a comment and I select the winner. Um, I've uh, just did my first one in August and it went very well and I'm doing one in September. Um, if you, uh, the prize for September is you could win yourself 10 packs of um, Infinite Rebirth which is the new set, set 15, um, which the sneak peek is this weekend. So um, obviously you wouldn't get your um, 10 packs until the end of the month um, when the set will be out and purchasable but um, the winner of that will be getting 10 packs of Infinite Rebirth so if you are interested in doing that please go check out that video and enter it. Um, it costs you absolutely nothing and if you win I send you the packs and that's it. Okay now <clears throat> now I'm going to get into what this uh, video is mainly about. It is a deck profile update on um, my Transcendence Dragon Novel Vague deck. Now we all know what happened um, in August. Um, um, Conroe hit got the um, ban um, here, like he had already, like he got in Japan. Now we saw this coming, guys, and I don't like it. And I've seen people they've made videos explaining why that Conroe shouldn't have been hit. That instead they should have hit um, this guy, Nova Roman Dragon, because it, he was the reason this deck was busted, not Conroe. And plus, Conroe, he was like. Anybody who played this game literally from the start, they've seen Conroe. You know, I mean, he's like, he was this, if, if, you know, sometimes when your opponent stands up their starting unit and you see their starter, it's sometimes a giveaway of what they're playing. Maybe they're playing a specific ride chain. Maybe they're playing, a, a, you know, their archetype all right, all right away. For a long time, Conroe was the universal starter of Kagero. So when you were like, oh, I have no freaking idea what kind of Kagero deck I'm playing against. Um, but... Oh well, I can understand why he got that, why he got the axe, but I don't agree with it. However, guys, that does not mean Conroe is no longer um, worth, worth, worth useful. Wow. Um, keep in mind, guys, you can still tech this in your deck. It is just not legal for you to use it as your starting unit. Now, at the same breath, there isn't a whole lot of good starting units for Kagero. There was one that came out in Z14. I can't remember his name. But um, whenever you retire one of your opponent's rear guards, you move him into the soul, and your opponent has to blow up another one of their units. And then you got uh, Red Pulse Draco Kid, who's the great three search. But there really is not any like major starter, you know. That, but now, now that Conroe is no longer um, usable as the starter. Keep in mind, guys, you can still tech him because he still is a one-for-one. One. You know, you can call him Counter Blast 1 and search out any grade 1 in the deck. The only problem with this is is if you play um, something like 8 grade 3s, 11 grade 2s, 14 grade 1s, and 16 grade 0s, and then plus your starter, so 17, you have to drop something else in there. Um, and if you drop one of your grade ones, it can just lead to, it can lead to problems, you know, because you, it, it, it depends on how you want to build your deck. I mean, cause I, there was a question me and Zane were asked and it's like, what's a good deck ratio? Well, in my opinion, seven to eight grade threes, 10 to 11 grade twos, four, 13 to 15 grade ones, and then your standard 16 triggers and your starter. Now there are some decks where you can play. Um, extra grade zeros as a tech card and it works but you just have to make sure that your deck can do it um, now this version that I'm about to show you it does not have Conroe in it I have another version that plays Conroe in it if you are interested in seeing that I will show it to you I just thought I'd show you one that if you were gonna go to um, like a tournament maybe a locals maybe a regional Maybe if this, um, in my opinion, I think this would be the most consistent because that's what I built it for. Um, so I'm going to go through the deck. I'll explain my reasoning, uh, my reason for the choices, um, 
and uh, explain to you why um, I have it built this way. And then, as always, guys, if you ever have any questions, you can just leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. So. And if you would be interested in seeing the version of this deck with that still place Conroe, just leave it in the comment section, and I will um, get that together and post it for you guys. So now that we can't use Conroe, that leaves us with only one really good starter for this deck, um, and that is Red Pulse Draco Kid, so our grade 3 search. Um, keep in mind, um, his ability reads um, that you may search for up to one grade 3 or greater. So if you do um, reveal Vague off the top of your deck with um, Red Pulse, you can put that Vague into your hand. Um, you just need to be um, you just need to be aware that it's going to be dead until um, you have rode your grade 3 or if you can search it out to use it with your grade 2 novel card, novel critic. Um, but more times than not you're going to use him to grab your grade 3 and your grade 3 is pretty much customizable to you. Um, and then for triggers, um, I went down to 6 critical and 6 draw trigger. You need to play a little bit more draw power now but since we don't have that easy search out with Conroe. I do understand that this deck still get it, it consistently can still hit grade 4 without any chance of missing a ride on you know like having to sit on a, um, say a grade 2 for an extra turn. Um, I just wanted to build this as consistently as possible because as long as you open up with Novell, the grade 4, and you open up with Novell Roman, the grade 1, you're fine, you know, and then any grade 2, obviously. So if you open up with Novell Roman, the grade 1, any grade 2, and Novell, um, Transcendence Dragon Novell, the grade 4, you're fine. But I still built it just in case maybe you're missing one piece, um, before you do, uh, before you start, um, you know, doing shenanigans that this deck can do, um... That it's just as consistently going to get you those pieces if you don't have them after you have drawn your first five cards and you mulliganed. So. And then obviously we're playing four heal triggers because we are smart. <clears throat> now, I did see a deck profile from someone online that they basically um, stripped this deck of every trigger and just put 16 critical triggers in the deck. You can do that. I wouldn't recommend it, <laughs> um, but that's just me, um, because you will run, I mean, because if you do, the reason I love Kagiro decks, and that I have currently three, and I'm about to have a fourth, um, <laughs> I'm not joking either, and I'm not talking like I have, like, like, all the cards to have them, I literally have completed right now three Kagero decks, guys, and I'm almost done with a fourth, and that'll be completed once set 15 gets here, so you can imagine what that's going to be. You know, Kagero, the reason I love the clan is it's probably the best toolboxing clan that there is, um, because a lot of clans, they went to um, um, archetypes, um, like Gold Paladins became Liberators, um, Royal Paladins became Jewel Knights. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, that's a joke between me and another uh, Vanguard tuber. So that was a stab at you, uh, Dark Moon Tamer. Um, so, but anyway, you know, every clan it seems has gotten their new sort of archetype, and that's fine. I actually kind of liked it. But the thing that made Kagero so stupid, while they did get one in Seal Dragons, um, you know. Seal Dragons really wasn't ground shattering, and I, and I don't mean that as an an insult to any Seal Dragon player, because I actually like the deck. It's just not out of all the other Kagro decks. There's just a lot of other Kagro decks that I play, but I do have respect for the Seal Dragon deck because I have two friends that play it, and I'm very impressed with the deck because it just seems to fit their playstyle. My friend Zane and my friend Connor play it, and I, I I always enjoy my matches with their Seal Dragons. Now. On the same token, every other Kagro deck, even Dauntless, is not an archetype. It's just another card. You can play Bar in all of those decks. And there's a lot of clans now. You can't play your 8K boosters because you have to have Dimensional Robo in the name. You have to have Jewel Knight in the name. You have to have Liberator in the name. And Kagro, they haven't done that. You know, there is no archetype that requires a special counterblasting in Kagro except Seal Dragons. And... Seal Dragons, they have a limited pool, so it's easy to build that deck, you know, so you're almost limited in your decisions. You can't really play a lot of non-Seal Dragon cards, but that's why Kagro is just so cool, um, but that's just me. 
if you, and you'll even notice that I, w I will say that for the Seal Dragons, they did give us one of the triggers that I really was glad Kagro got, and that was basically a Margo clone, um, like the Royal Paladin uh, draw trigger where you can call it, move it to the soul, and give it plus 3k anywhere, which is why I'm glad that... I will say, though, that draw trigger is very hard to find around here. Um, for my grade 1s, obviously, we're still playing four perfects. We need four perfects. I'm playing Dragon Dancer Mario just because um, it came in with Va in the vague set, so I figured, why not? Um, I'm actually looking to pick up two more Dragon Dancer Maria, so if you do have them and you're willing to trade for them, um, hit me up. Um, <clears throat> now, here's the grade 1 that everyone thinks that should have gotten hit except instead of... Um, Conroe. <laughs> um, and um, I play four copies of him in Novo Roman Dragon. Now, basically what Novo Roman Dragon does <clears throat> is when he is rode as the vanguard or called to the rear guard, you reveal the grade four in your hand, you can send it back to your deck, and then you can search out any Kagero grade three and add it to your hand. Um, which, looking at just his effect, is pretty busted. That just says, okay, if you have this card, put it back in the deck, and now draw it take any grade 3 out of your deck that you want. They pretty much just, okay, they basically took Conroe and made it a grade 1, and it's a gra and it's now a grade 1 that searches out grade 3s. That's pretty much the only difference, but um, he's still, um, the reason you want to play 4 is now that we don't have that trick where we can use Conroe to search him out, you want to make sure that you get to him. So by playing 4, you make your chances excuse me, as high as possible to get him. Um, so I would recommend playing four, um, but that's just me. Um, for the rest of my grade ones, I play four copies of a staple card in almost any Kagro deck, um, Dragon Monk Gojo. Now, um, <clears throat> Gojo is just kind of one of those cards that is just good in almost about any Kagro deck. Um, I play it in my Dragonic Overlord at the end deck, I play it in my Dauntless deck, and I play it in my Vague deck, and I'm more than likely going to play it in my Rebirth deck. He is just too good of a card for Kagero. Um, he is a good first turn ride because if you're missing one card, you can drop um, a dead card and draw another card. He's in here just to, again, improve consistency because now that we don't have Conroe, you just have to make sure that you have enough consistency in the deck to where you'll be able to draw into or get the pieces that you need so you don't get grade stuck. Um, so you definitely want to um, max out on Novel Roman and Gojo, in my opinion. Um, and next, for the last grade one, is I play two copies of Dragon Knight Ashgar. This is one of the stupidest Persona boosters in, in the history of Vanguard. He basically says if he boosts the grade four, he boosts for ten. So, um, and plus, even if he, you never end up getting him behind um, a, Nov, um, a Novel Vague, you can still s ride him as your grade one. You can still call him to one of the side rear guards, and he's still a solid 7k boost. Um, but, um... Basically, all this deck does is it literally just pushes out a ton of pressure until your opponent literally just can't guard anymore because we all know what Veg does. But, you know, I really didn't think I had to go into that. But <laughs> just for argument's sake, um, for grade twos, we play four copies of Novel Critic Dragon. Now, this card, there's some Novel players, and they don't play this card, and I don't know why. They'll play four Berserk Dragon, but they won't play a single Novel Critic. And it's like, okay... Berserk Dragon, you counterblast two to pop a grade two or less. Novel Critic, you counterblast one, reveal the grade four, and you can pop anything. On the field, anything. Um, I don't understand why you wouldn't max out on this card. I think Novel Critic is an amazing card. Com if you can combo him with um, um, th this next card, it almost becomes like a free pop. So, for Novel Critic. And the card that I'm talking about, of course, is four copies of um, Bell Bellicosity Dragon. Bellicosity Dragon is your Kagro Damage Unflipper. If you can get... One thing that I like to do is ride this as my grade 2 and call this to a rear guard, get his skill off, and then attack. And if his atta if your opponent lets him hit, you basically got to pop a unit for free. So I don't understand why um, there are some Novel players that don't play Novel Critic. I, I, I just... It doesn't make sense to me. Um, for the last grade two, I play um, three copies of Berserk Dragon. This is Berserk Dragon. He is in here because the I built this deck, and what I think Vague is best at is if you just never let your opponent establish a field. 
um, because if your opponent knows anything about Vague, they're going to guard early because if they hold on to those grade zeros like you no would normally for the late game, it's not going to help you in any way because of Vague's ability. Um, he's a pretty much a grade 4 silent Tom. They're not going to do any good by holding on to the grade zeros, so they're going to guard early. Um, so if you are if they're committing to the board and guarding everything, um, and even if they're not committing as much, maybe they're just riding their vanguard and maybe calling a booster for their vanguard and maybe an extra attacker. If you're eliminating those just few rear guards, they might be pushing out just to maintain a minimal board presence while launching as many attacks at them as you can they're going to run through all their cards and pretty much then all you're going to have to worry about are perfect guards and that's not going to save them for long so um the berserk dragons are literally in here just to, um just so there's a backup to novel critic um because my grade two lineup is pretty much seven units that can pop units and then the other four is damage on flippers that make their abilities cheaper um so pretty self-explanatory but um again you just want to play this deck as consistently as that you possibly can um and um i think if you continually just continue uh popping units off your opponent's board it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that that's going to eventually just cause them to lose because they won't have support and they won't have attackers so and then for my grade three is i play four copies of probably one of the best break rides in the game um, Dauntless Drive Dragon, and this is pretty simple. Um, just for argument's sake, basically when a Cogrogue rides on top of him, the new unit gains plus 10,000 power. At the end of the turn that the unit attacked, um, you can discard three and stand the Vanguard back up. The attack doesn't have to hit, it doesn't have to miss, it just has to happen. Um, and also Dauntless is whenever he attacks, if the number of rear guards you have is more than your opponent, he gains plus two, making him a 13k attacker. Um, keep in mind that, um... If the unit stood before um, that turn, you have to use Dauntless's effect first. Um, so basically, if you he somehow stood again before you activated Dauntless's effect, you can't activate it. You must activate Dauntless after you attack with your Vanguard for the first time. So um, if you don't have the money to buy Dauntless's, I understand because Dauntless, I believe, is still like a thirty-dollar card. Um, you know, if you can find him for, like, in the 20s, I would scoop him up. <laughs> but, um, because I, um, I actually have two play sets of this card, um, and it wasn't easy to track down the, the rest of the second play set, trust me. Um, you can use the other grade three that came in this. Um, I don't know what his name is, uh, but basically what he does is... If you retire one of your opponent's units during your main phase, you can superior ride him, and he his attack is only 9k that turn. Um, I think it's, uh, I really don't even begin to know what his name is, but honestly, if you have um, Dauntlesses, I think Dauntless, you should just play an entire play set of Dauntless if possible. Um, if you want, um, I'm thinking when um, Dragonic Overlord from set 15, the new break ride for Kagro comes out, I'm thinking about maybe picking up a second place set of him to play test in vague because while Dauntless is good, um, dropping those three cards um, in this deck sometimes can be a problem if you're not able to finish your opponent when you break ride, whether you break ride vague or you break ride another Dauntless. Um, it sometimes just you know can get in the way. So I recommend honestly maybe also trying out dragonic overlord when he comes out and i'm definitely going to do that or you could play two two i mean there's really nothing wrong with it because you're either way whether you use dauntless or dragonic overlord you're still getting two attacks you're still getting two twin drives and you're still going to do cause your opponent to drop cards or minus from the field one way or the other <clears throat> and then honestly um the last uh card in the deck is we play four copies of transcendence dragon dragonic no veil vague now People were selling this card left and right on eBay. Um, just for argument's sake, let's look up how much Vague is going for on eBay. Um, just for fun. Um, so let's see, we're going to look up Vanguard Vague. Um, he is still hovering around between $25 to $35. He's selling all around in that range. Um, um, so, 
so yeah, around... Oh, here's a play set for 110. That's not bad, actually. Um, the whole deck for 300, but that's four Dauntless. I mean, so yeah, okay, so Vague, he's hovering around between 25 to $35. If you can get him for the 25 or even less, um, go for it. Um, people were just selling their Vagues, thinking, okay, Vague's never going to be useful again because they banned Con Conro, and I'm so pissed I'm going to pout, guys. This is still a card that you want if you are going to play Kagero any time in the near future. Keep in mind, any Kagero deck can splash just two of him, and it's a threat. Because if... I don't want to spill a lot here, but you can mix him in almost any Kagero deck, and he's not... It's fine, because you don't... You don't have to play four. You know, people get so caught up that you can't splash Vague and anything else because you must play four Vague for some reason. Guys, you don't use Vague for his limit break, which um, I'll read through his effects real quick and then I'll finish what I'm saying. Um, his limit break is Counter Blast 3, Soul Blast 3, and Persona Blast. So you're going to Counter Blast 3, Soul Blast 3, and then drop a copy from your hand of him. Um, so you technically need two Vagues to pull this combo off. Um it basically it basically blows your opponent's field up. All their rear guards are gone. Um, so minus five your opponent. Um, <laughs> his other abilities during your turn, all your opponent's trigger effects are nullified. During the battle that this unit attacks a vanguard, your opponent cannot call with grade cannot call grade zeros to the guardian circle. Oh, oh and if he's on a rear guard, he loses a thousand power. Um, Guys, the reason this card is good, it's not because of his limit break. It's because of those set two abilities that you can't use grade zeros when he attacks on the Vanguard Circle. And during your opponent's during your turn, your opponent's triggers are nullified. If they hit a draw trigger, they don't get 5,000 power and they don't draw. If they hit a critical trigger, they don't get that plus 5,000 power to maybe guard against another attack. If they're at 5 damage and their 6 damage is a heal trigger and that would normally keep them alive and Vague is your vanguard, it doesn't matter. Pretty much if Vague is your vanguard and they deal that 6th successful attack on your opponent's vanguard, they're fucked. There's no way to recover. It is it is set. That is why Vague is so stupid. Any Kagro deck that you choose to play in the near future, whether it's an Overlord deck, whether it's a... Um, a Dauntless deck, whether it is Perdition Dragons when they come along, you could stick this in there and it is good. I would recommend if you are planning to play Kagro at any time in the near future, do yourself a favor, pick up one or two vague and just hold on to it. I'm gonna, con I'm probably gonna pick up another two of for myself eventually when he content because he's only going down lower and lower because there's so many people out there who just think this card is now completely worthless and it will never be viable again um just do yourself a favor and if you see someone has this in their trade binder ask them what's your value and if they go eh, 20 bucks do your best to grab it because any cargo deck that you choose to play in the future, this guy can be an immediate threat if you ride him. And you'll be surprised. I have, I um, took a Dauntless deck to my locals um, once, and um, it played four Dauntless um, Drive Dragon. It played two Dauntless Reverse and two Vague, and it caught everyone off guard. Okay, I'm gonna ride Dauntless Reverse. I'm gonna destroy your field. And now when you have no board presence and you have like six cards in your hand, I'm going to ride this. Oh, wait, five of those cards in your hand are triggers. Game over. Um, vague is a threat, guys. If you have your vagues and you, are ha and you have them in your trade book or you're trying to sell them, please take my advice and hold on to them. And... Give them a try in another Kagro deck another day. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my um, deck profile update on my Transcendence Dragon Dragonic Novel Vague deck. If you would like to see um, another build where you can still have Conroe in there as a one-for-one, -one, let me know, and um, I'll try it. If you want to... A simple fix that you could do... Um, another thing you could do with this deck, um, if you don't want to, because you really don't need them... You really don't need this. Um, you really don't need a 10k boost. I have it in there just because it's a 10k boost. Um, 
If you wanted to go for even more search out power, you could make the two Ashgar in this deck a Seal Dragon Kersey. Um, that's probably what I'd make them, but one small problem. I never built Seal Dragon, so I have no Seal Dragon card except for the draw trigger. <laughs> so, um, honestly, if I got two Seal Dragon Kersey, I'd probably make these Kerseys just to add more consistency. Um, but you could drop a... You could drop... Um, honestly, I even thought about... You could drop one of the Dauntless... I'm not kidding, and add in the Conroe, just so, so then you're playing technically only three grade threes, but, you know, there's plenty of other things that you can do, because if you play only three grade threes, you do get Novell, Roman, and Vague, you're, you can still get to your grade three, so there's still plenty of things that you can do, so if you would like me to show you another video on possible things that you can do to make Conroe still work in this deck, please let me know in the comment section below, and I'll be more than happy to make that video, guys, you just gotta have to, you just gotta ask for it, so I hope you did enjoy this video, um, sorry if it ran a little bit longer than more of my, most of my deck profiles do, I just wanted to completely explain everything and kind of explain guys that this deck is not dead you know it is still a major threat without conroe as the leading vanguard so i hope you enjoyed this so in the comment section below please share some feedback with me if you want to see another video to talk about how you can accommodate conroe um or anything guys so thank you very much for watching um i hope you enjoyed this video uh if this is your first time viewing my channel um, so if it was, please make sure you subscribe for deck profiles, random rants, giveaways. I do all kinds of stuff. So make sure you thumbs up this video and leave me some feedback below, guys. Thank you very much, and I'll see you later.